I just bought a PlayStation 5 Pro and Gran Turismo is an interesting one, friends. You see, the game was supposed to launch with improvements. However, if you look at the list of published games, you can see Gran Turismo is missing. That means the update realistically is going to come. It's just been delayed. But we can do something really awesome right now, and that is look at Gran Turismo and how it performs on the PS5 Pro as is. Now, why does this matter at all in the slightest? Because the game is locked to 4K60. However, it has quite a lot of graphic options. And so today, that's exactly what we're going to look at. And I've actually found a really cool way that we can check if the frame rate is absolutely stable. Because realistically, there's four settings. And again, I wanted to test these before they basically lock them out. So in Gran Turismo's menu, you have these two options for display settings. Again, this is pre-update. I need to make it clear. So by the time you actually get your Pro, it may be different. They may lock some of these settings, but I think it's a really good idea of the performance of this thing. Because in case you don't know, the PlayStation 5 Pro essentially is a GPU improvement. There's not really any change in terms of CPU, which leaves a lot of frames on the table for a lot of games. So you've got two options, prioritize frame rate and prioritize ray tracing slash resolution. Pretty self-explanatory. And both of these settings, you're gonna max out on the PlayStation 5 Pro. In fact, both of these options genuinely do the same frame rate during gameplay and resolution. The difference arrives in replay mode. So on the resolution and ray tracing setting, normally ray tracing is enabled on the replays. That's going to change with the PS5 Pro update. They're going to have it on track where it's supposedly going to drop resolution. It looks like it's dropping resolution. However, here we drop frame rate to 30 frames and we make the cars reflect each other. Also not incredibly, but it will improve in the next update that's coming out probably at the end of the month. So now let's get into the meat and potatoes. Can Gran Turismo go to 4K 120 frames a second? And I'm not talking downscaled and FSR'd up because we checked that last time. And uh, uh. Right, this time what I'm going to do as well is again, my capture card does support variable refresh rate. So I'm going to enable variable refresh rate and I'm going to put it on 120 hertz output. We are now completely 120 on this. Okay, the game has instantly, instantly put the 120 hertz option on. We've got prioritized frame rate or ray tracing. Now, we're going to jump to frame rate because this is what I tested before because I assumed that I would well, need to lower it down. So what games tend to do these days is to dynamically adjust the resolution until it's about right and run a solid 60. I kind of wish their ceiling was ridiculously high like 4K or 8K to future-proof these things because if I get a PlayStation 20, I'm going to be able to run these games at crazy levels that I was never able to do on the PS5. But see, the problem then is they can't <laughs> all of a sudden charge us for remasters and remakes and not that they actually bother doing them for the games that matter. So now we're going to scope in a little bit and you can definitely see some jaggies. Now, I'm going to be honest, uh, compared to what I remember it being like the other day, it's actually looking a little bit better. Now, you can definitely tell the detail of the cars, the jagged edges on the track, on the car, they're significant. They're just not great. It's not a pleasant experience. It's kind of similar to what Drive Club was doing when I was playing. Now, just to be clear, I am terrible at Gran Turismo <laughs> on a control. I can't do it. On a wheel, honestly, Gran Turismo is so much easier on a wheel. No question. But it's safe to assume that this is getting solid 120 FPS. Now, I don't think it was able to really fully get that previously, which would totally make sense because I just didn't expect it to. The idea with the variable refresh rate is that you avoid issues because your screen and your console talk to each other and they can basically match. When they match anything over 60, I'm, I'm pretty happy to be honest. If I can get 80, 90 frames a second with variable refresh rate, awesome. But I've actually got a way that we can test how this is actually running. Again, I did this. It looks fine. I'm, I'm guessing it's 120. I don't know if I can tell 100% <laughs> to be honest with you, but I am not Digital Foundry. I don't have this crazy equipment to dissect and make sure this is running solid. But what I do have an LG TV, which does display the frames, which we'll get to. I just want to see what it would look like, you know, in the best sexy quality first. So what a few people told me is that you can indeed prioritize resolution get the ray tracing on the replay still, and actually still get 120 FPS. Now, 
I don't know how much I believe it, but it's insanely looking a little bit better on the menus. I love, I love, 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 love. I said this previously, but 120 hertz or 120 FPS on menus and UI and things like that on a desktop, on a phone. Genuinely awesome. I don't actually usually care about this, but maybe, maybe I'll be converted today seeing 4K 120. And I, I really don't get how they're doing it. Like I get it, it's a closed track game, so this is maybe a best case scenario, but 4K 120? Why are they ruining it with these future modes of, oh yeah, you can get it, but it's not actually, because of the ray tracing rubbish. I don't know. I, I just, <laughs> what I'm really hoping is we just keep the options that we've got now and they add more. That would be fantastic. Okay, here we are. It's looking incredibly smooth for me, obviously. It's looking incredibly smooth. You know what? I mean, if it's not 120 FPS, I don't know if I can tell. So this is essentially a best case scenario right now. I, it is definitely better than 60, but it's almost a question of like, is it genuinely for me? Cause I'm mostly thinking about PC when I'm thinking 120 frames. Is it really worth it? Or would the better option be 8K 60? I don't know, 4K realistically is as high as I really need to bother to go, but this is looking good. I might be a convert. I might I might stick to this option. I might stuff the ray tracing if I can when the update comes out because that I'm assuming is going to come at the end of the month. But that's why I wanted to do this test now and make sure because I feel like they're going to bugger it up. They're going to make it so you can't do this for sure. You can see the detail on the cars. The Jaggies are alias, but very, very minimally compared to what it was previously. So it's definitely running at the 4K. I'm guessing again, it's prioritizing the resolution. Guessing it's a locked 4k for the resolution mode wouldn't really make sense otherwise I just can't see a world in where the 8k really makes sense. What's the point genuinely? <laughs> so then the other test would be the replay mode and Yeah, this is 120 the replay is 120 they left it dynamic So the game isn't hard locked. I don't know. Maybe maybe it was until you put the VRR on but the game doesn't lock its frame rates at least under 120 it locks it at 120 it's just this is awesome holy crap the motion blur and stuff it's just beautiful like another level of it this is really good i am very happy with this but again i don't 100 know yet until we go to the tv and check the actual frame rate but i am properly impressed i didn't comprehend the idea that this game could run at 120 fps like why <laughs> why so just to clarify i need to give a little bit of context here i generally play at 1440p or 4k primarily 4k and i drop it down if i can't and play at 60. now i'm a youtuber and that means i upload most of my gameplay to youtube which realistically then means I can only do 4K 60 or 1440p 60. There's no point because I can't go any higher than 60 frames. And if I can't get a solid 120 frames, then there's no point in it because you will notice there's like missing frames or it, it just gets messed up. It won't look good. So I kind of just stick with higher resolution, about 60 frames, maybe a little bit more, but then I throw on VSync and lock it to that because it ultimately becomes super smooth and the reason i love 4k so much is just so much crisper even 1440p to 4k it just it's so much crisper and i can tell especially on a small screen like i have in front of me now i can pick out all the details in crispy 4k all right let's shut up you want to see it i want to see it let's go to the tv and check those frames. Welcome to my living room. Right, so there is the PlayStation 5 Pro all plugged in. This is actually the original one that normally sits over there. And we're good to go. Plugged it in, no issues. So on LG screens, what you'll notice if I press the settings is this bar pops up. And this bar tells you the frame rate that the game is running at, which is so freaking cool. You can see that it's dropping, but I think to be fair, it's not 100% accurate, but we are close to the car. It gives us an idea. I'm pretty impressed, actually. Now, the biggest test would actually be doing a race, which I'm gonna turn this menu off so I can actually see. Maximum number of cars, that's pretty important. It's all well and good being able to get 120, but if I can't get 120 while racing with maximum amount of cars in front of my face, there's a problem, right? Okay, we've loaded into the track. 
That is saying about 100. That is not 120. But we're not in the race yet. Let's jump into the race. 60, 107, 120, 64. That is a big drop there. Let's drop to the back of the pack so we can get a proper idea. That's saying 119 FPS. That's practically 120 frames a second behind all of these cars. That is 4K, 120. That is actually awesome. I kind of wasn't expecting it to do it very well. It's definitely not locked. I mean, at least according to the TV, which again, not 100% accurate. And then we'll jump to the replay. This is showing 80. This is gonna show more of the track and stuff. Okay, it's definitely not as stable, but I haven't seen it go below 76. Again, not 100% accurate test, but it's definitely a cool way to check it out. Oh my goodness. That's so good. Again, it's all well and good me testing it on the Pro, but I should probably also test it on the other one, you know, to compare. Back on the base and straight away on the home screen, 80 frames a second. This is a bad sign. <laughs> I'm still on the prioritized resolution, but this is on the base PlayStation now. Even this like flat menu. Okay, it's not completely flat. We're still not 100. 60. We're at 60. I mean, to be fair. Oh, 40, 70, 85. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. Okay, here's the base PlayStation and we are rocking. You know, to, to, you know what? You know what? That's actually not bad. I really don't know <laughs> if this is a 700 pound upgrade for 30 more frames. <laughs> so now we're actually gonna go to the replay mode and yet yeah, 73, it is definitely down compared to what it was previously. But I'm actually really impressed by this. I didn't know this was a thing. I'm so, like variable refresh rate is awesome. So there you are, my friends, it's an improvement but I'm actually more impressed about variable refresh rate. But it actually makes it more usable for me now because if I can get mostly 120, again, we're gonna see what it's gonna be like in the future. I'm so sure with the PSSR, they'll improve it. And if I can get a solid 120 on the update, that genuinely means I could use it because it's exactly half would be then my perfect frame rate for these videos right here. You wouldn't know a difference. I'd have more frames. Everyone is a winner, especially me. Anyway, there you go, PS5 Pro. We're gonna do some more content on this because I'm super curious as to see how games adapt. And I, I love this stuff, it's just so sick. However, I will not be getting an 8K TV unless LG wanna you know, sponsor an 8K TV. I don't need an 8K TV. Who needs an 8K TV? Click the next video and maybe one day I'll be able to afford one. <laughs> I still probably won't buy one. <laughs>